Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us call to mind our many sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule. And as the mule passed under the branches of a large terebinth, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth, while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Joab that he had seen Absalom hanging from a terebinth, and taking three pikes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom, 
still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked about and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king, who said, If he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, Step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news that this day the Lord has taken your part, freeing you from the grabs of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, Is young Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and, who, and all who rebel against you with evil intent be as that young man. The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. He said as he wept, My son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and that day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army. When they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Give my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, Lord, and answer me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hand on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 12 years. 
she had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, and the brother, of, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha koom, which means, Little girl, I say to you, Arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the story of our first reading today should have been a happy story. Absalom, who rebelled against King David, because he wanted to be king, was killed by the soldiers of King David. It was a successful mission. They were able to neutralize the rebel. And when King David knew of the death of Absalom, Instead of rejoicing that the rebellion is now over, David wept because Absalom was his son. The success turned into sorrow. The rejoicing turned into grieving. 
My dear brothers and sisters, this story in our first reading today reminds us that people and relationships are more important than outputs, results, and success. King David gave more value to, the, to his relationship to his son than to the success of the mission. Kung ang mahalaga lamang kay David ay yung tagumpay ng kanyang misyon na mawala ang nagtatangka sa kanyang pagkahari, dapat nag, nag, natuwa siya sa kamatayan ni Absalom kahit na anak pa niya ito. Pero dahil mas pinahalagahan niya ang kanyang pagiging ama sa isang anak na nagrebelde sa kanya, siya'y tumangis at labis na nalungkot sa kamatayan ni Absalom. And this is also what we see in our gospel today. We heard a double he healing by Jesus. Jesus brought to life the daughter of Jairus, the synagogue official, and Jesus also healed the woman who was suffering for, from hemorrhages for 12 years. But more than just physical healing, these stories talk about relationships. Healing happened because of the relationship with Jesus in faith. Kaya ang tinitingnan natin sa dalawang pagpapagaling na Jesus na ito ay hindi lamang yung himala na nagpagaling si Jesus na bumuhay si Jesus ng isang dalagang namatay na. Ang tinitingnan natin dito ay yung pananampalataya na naging dahilan ng mga himala. At ang pananampalataya ay walang iba kundi ang ugnayan sa Panginoon. The relationship with Jesus was far more important than the healings that happened. My dear brothers and sisters, many times we give more importance to outputs, to results, to our success than to people and our relationship with them. Minsan, ang ating pag-iisip ay di bali ng magkaaway-away, di bali ng may matapakan, di bali ng magkasiraan, basta maging matagumpay lamang ang isang proyekto o ang isang gawain. How many people have we sacrificed? How many relationships have we sacrificed only because we are after results and success? Ang una nating sinasakripisyo, tao, para sa ating tagumpay. But my dear brothers and sisters, people who give more importance to relationships end up to be more productive and their fruits are more lasting. And so let us learn from David and from Jesus a very important lesson in life a very important standard and measure for success. Let us put people and relationships first. Please stand. 
confident that when we pray with faith to God the Father, He will respond to our request with open-hearted generosity. We now bring our needs before Him. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church throughout the world may be a symbol of Christ's healing work, by her care for those who are in sick in body, mind, and spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may cooperate with those who are engaged in providing clean and healthy environment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That doctors and nurses and those who care for the sick may show the compassion and gentleness of Jesus in caring for the least of his brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That medical science may soon find cure for rare diseases, which prevent those who suffer from them from living full and active life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those who mourn the death of a child may be consoled by their faith in the gentle mercy of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We also remember the people we promised to pray for and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, help us to go on trusting in you and to have faith in the healing power of your Son who binds up all our wounds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service, be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, through faith may ever increase, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish to greet our Chinese and Filipino Chinese brothers and sisters a happy Lunar New Year. We thank you for joining our Mass in the Manila Cathedral this morning and we invoke God's blessings upon you and upon your families. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.